this cool. Let's take a quick look at a couple of small exercises. We run a standard. We're only looking at benzene here. We run a benzene standard, and the instrument gives us back 289916. So we're going to call this 289. I'm going to pick three significant figures. It might be prudent to pick four, but let's just go with three. Okay, so we have a standard, 100 standard. It gives us a 289. We have a sample. that gives us a 113987. Similarly, I'm going to call this 113. OK, so what do we do with these? Well, the, the question is, from a mathematical standpoint, is how does the 100 is to 289 as what is to 113. So if it's 100, we get a 289. But we didn't get a 289. We got a 113. So what do we, what do we know about our answer? Well, it's going to be like half or something like that. This comes up a lot in applied mathematics. The relationship is linear and directly proportional. So I think of it this way. If 100 gives you 289, what will give you a 113? And the way I calculate this is I say 100 times the small number divided by the big number. That'll give me a smaller number. So 100 times 113 divided by 289 gives me 39.1. I want to make it more complicated than that, but it's not. That's all there is to it. Let's look at the calibration line. The calibration line is defined by the one point that we've established at 100, the area is 289, and 0. A line that goes through the origin tells us there's a direct relationship between the two variables we're looking at. The equation for a line, as we know, is y equals mx plus b y equals mx plus b. The slope in this case is delta y, which is 289 minus 0, or 289, delta y over delta x. Delta x is 100 minus 0, or 100. This is the equation of the line, y equals mx plus b. b is 0 in this case, so we can throw b away. So, so we solve for x, and we get y times 100. Solve for x here. Put the 100 up here. Put the, two, put the 289 down here. All right? OK, let's look at this real quickly. x, the 289 goes on the bottom. The 100 goes on the top, which gives us this. The, our y value is 113. We substitute the 113 in for the y, and we end up with 113 times 100 divided by 289, and we get an answer of 39.1. And this, these units, of course, are whatever we started out with. A fairly common scenario in industrial settings is to take the sample you're concerned with, dry it, calculate a moisture, and then do your analysis on the dried sample. So let's take an example of bread. Say, you're, say you want to know the protein content in bread You start out by weighing a sample, drying it, re-weighing it, and you find out that it's 18% water and 82%, let's call it not water. Then the dried component is analyzed further, and you find that it's 9% um, protein, 91% not protein. So how much protein was in the original slice of bread? Okay, okay, let's take one, take, just, just make sure we understand where we're coming from here. The bread has a lot of water in it. We want 
to know how much protein is in the original slice of bread, but our analysis was done on a dried sample. When you're in a laboratory, you, you kind of are responsible to make sure things are right. This, this question, this is the way I did it. I say, okay, let's say we have 100 grams of bread. Of that, grams, of that 100 grams of bread, 82 grams of it is dry, and 9% of it is protein. So I calculate that 9% of 82 grams is 7.38 grams of protein. So 7.38 grams in our 100 grams tells us that it's 7.38% protein. And you look at that, that looks about right. If um, our 9% protein of 82 is going to give us a number that's less than 9 and 7.38. So I feel confident that this is right. But it's a little bit intimidating. Where did this number come from? And the number comes from simply taking our 9% and multiplying it by 0.82. And we end up with 7.38. Pretty, pretty, um, pretty common. The environmental business does this too.